its neighbor algorithm is one of the algorithms that allows us to find a cheap Hamilton circuit. Uh, or in other words, uh, a nice solution to a traveling salesman problem, a way to travel between a bunch of different points uh, in an efficient, at least less costly ma uh, manner. So uh, let's review the algorithm itself. So we want to start by picking a starting location for our, our trip. Typically, it's where we live. Um, and, but if we, we don't necessarily need to start the algorithm at that point to find a circuit. Um, and then from there, we're going to travel to the nearest neighbor. So by definition, the nearest neighbor is the cheapest location from the current location. So um, we, we looked at a few examples last week uh, of using the nearest neighbor algorithm to do this. Um, and we started at A, uh, and the nearest neighbor from A was the cheapest location connected to A, the cheapest adjacent vertex. So essentially, we had three options. We could have traveled first to D, first to C, or first to B. Uh, and we chose to go to B first because it was the nearest neighbor or the, the cheapest available option from where I'm at. Um, and then uh, from B, we go to the next nearest neighbor which was the um, next step of the algorithm. And so from B, we then travel to C, because that's the cheapest location from. Then once we move to C, again, we're kind of pretending that we're in this location, traveling to the next nearest neighbor. Um, th and this, just a reminder that this was one of those uh, somewhat tricky positions, because technically uh, from C, it would, would be cheaper to go to A next, uh, but for some reason we selected to go to D. Um, but remember that the goal of the nearest neighbor algorithm is to develop a Hamilton circuit, to go to each location and return home. So it, it, in reviewing what we've done so far, we started at A, first we moved to B, second we moved to C. We don't want to go back to A next, it's and it's, it's not allowed, uh, even though it is cheaper, because that would close a partial circuit, leaving D out of the equation. So. Uh, if, if this was our solution, we what we're saying is we're going to go from A to B, B to C, C to A. We don't really want to go home yet because that's not a Hamilton circuit. We've, we've left D out of the answer. So uh, basically, we're this is the weakness of the nearest neighbor algorithm is towards the end, uh, you're forced to travel to D and we're forced to travel home to complete the Hamilton circuit, even though it's less expensive. So those would technically be the next nearest neighbor. And by the term next nearest neighbor, we're always Im um, implying that we're going to a new location always um, and never backtracking or somewhere we have not been. Because it would obviously be inefficient to travel back to A and then have to go to D and go home. Way, way more expensive than just going from C to A. So let's do a fresh example. Um, and well, uh, another resource I'm going to be using in chapter six and, and actually in probably a lot of these chapters is uh, I've posted it in the lecture notes right here is, is a graph creator resource where you can, which is what I use to make a lot of the graphs, which you'll see in my packets and slides um, and so on. Um, but if you, you can go to that link if you want to, or you can just use it to follow along. Um, but on this page, it's kind of neat because it allows me to trace um, some circuits. So I have a fresh example here. Uh, and if you want to try it yourself, uh, go ahead and pause the video and either create it in the graph creator uh, or draw it by hand or whatever. Um, but let's try to use the nearest neighbor algorithm to find a cheap Hamilton circuit. Uh, and since we don't have a starting location, uh, also if you want to create a Hamilton circuit, um, the vertex tools allow you to place the, uh, the points. Um, the edge tools allow you to create the lines, uh, and you can create weights um, right there. It, it's, I think it's relatively explanatory. You can just play around with it if you want. Um, and uh, the Graph Explorer allows you to highlight various things or even create Hamilton and Euler circuits as we did from Chapter 5. So it's kind of, kind of nice. Um, and since we're online, I think this resource is... I, I don't usually use this in class because we just do it by hand, but... Um, since we're all working online, might as well get into how we do that as well. Anyways, so we're going to create a Hamilton circuit. Let's just say arbitrarily we're going to start at C um, as our 
first location, and our goal is to use the nearest neighbor algorithm to find a cheap Hamilton circuit. So from C, we're going we need to first identify our nearest neighbor. Um, so since there are five other locations, there should be five five things I'm checking here. I could either go to B, A, D, E, or F. Clearly, C to B is the cheapest, the nearest neighbor. So step one, C to B. Now step two is to go to the next nearest neighbor. So again, next I, from B, I'm either going to go to A, D, E, or F. The cheapest appears to be B to F, which is eight. And let's just say these are dollars or whatever. It could be mileage, it could be time. Um, but let's just say that this is the cost of uh, taking a bus route points or whatever it doesn't I guess it doesn't really make sense the numbers don't exactly make sense but we'll pretend uh, now that we're at F we're gonna travel to the next nearest neighbor which would be either a D or E the cheapest of those appears to be D F to D 13 as opposed to 17 or 21 now that I am at D uh, again the graphs can get a little confusing when there are larger graphs um, and more uh, elaborate situations but the thing that I think is easiest to remember is we're just always going to go to a new point and then once we finish going to all the points we're going to go home that's the idea of a Hamilton circuit so now that I'm at D next my next nearest neighbor would be I have, I have two choices E or A A is clearly cheaper A is my next nearest neighbor then now from A at the very end the, we're, we're, we're out of options which is again the weakness of the nearest neighbor algorithm is now I have to go to E and I have to go back home to C because I have to finish my Hamilton circuit. And we are now done with our nearest neighbor algorithm. Uh, and remember that this is an approximate algorithm, which just means that it's not guaranteed to give you the exact 100% perfect solution. And as we can see, we used a couple expensive edges at the end of our Hamilton circuit there. Uh, and then, so the last step is to figure out the total cost Actually, the graph creator will tell you the sum of all the weights up here, so that's another nice feature of doing it online. Um, but you know, if, if you're working on a test or whatever, not necessarily going to have those resources available to you. Um, so let's go ahead and do it by hand, um, and and kind of write it as we would. Uh, and remember, a lot of uh, we often want to write our solution using the list of um, the vertices in order. But in that case, let's just re-highlight our solution on our piece of paper here, which would be C, B, F, D, A, E. F, And we could also write that solution um, as using letters. So uh, let's go ahead and write it over. Um, C, B, F, D. That would be our Hamilton circuit um, from from running the nearest neighbor algorithm. And its total weight was 75. Uh, I'll go ahead and trust that the graph creator correctly added that up. But yeah, it would be 210, 23, 30, 49 as the total weight of that. So in your online homework, that's a lot of that that's often what it's gonna be asking is write out the write out the Hamilton circuit, find the net weight, something along those lines. Uh, and that's it. We're done with the nearest neighbor algorithm.